If you're wondering, hey, this is a different from your usual content, yeah, I, I know, I just wanted to make a video on this because I wanted to. It's also convenient for grandparents when they ask how vacation was. Atlanta, Georgia, home of the Georgia Aquarium and other things. Wednesday was pretty much just the drive there because it was a magnificent nine hours. Hour four, we got McDonald's and ate possibly the worst ketchup I've ever had. Uh, for all you fellow ketchup sommeliers out there, it was not fancy, which automatically disqualified it from being a decent ketchup experience. We then got back on the road, and by hour five, we were already tired enough to find everything funny as hell. We found this giant peach on the road, and I uploaded this to Instagram. Later on, we found the Georgia Welcome Center and this hilarious face cutout where you can stick your face in this ass, and I decided to simply do this. A joke which was not that funny, but we all laughed anyway because we didn't care. We kept driving and finally reached the hotel, where we proceeded to do nothing the rest of the day. Until five minutes passed and we realized, oops, we never ate, and no one felt like driving, so we walked to Bahama Breeze, the restaurant Dad sings the highest praise of. We got food, and pretty much everyone but Dad was mildly disappointed since our last visit four years ago. We went back to the hotel and prepared for the real vacation that was yet to come, but only after facing the challenge of vacationing. I swear to God, everyone talks about how school toilet paper is sandpaper, but no one ever talks about hotel bed sheets. But don't worry, they made up for it by giving us a three-ton blanket that will make you so warm you physically can't sleep. Oh god, I have to do this three more times. <laughs> After sleeping in the worst conditions possible, we woke up and headed for the Natural History Museum, where I forgot to film a lot of stuff. Well, this is mostly some dinosaur stuff and some pretty cool information. Found this sign kind of funny, so I took a picture, then discovered that the museum was actually a disguise. This whole time, it was really just another FNAF game. Midway through, we went to the little cafe, where I got the funniest proportioned hot dog I think I've ever seen, but the tiny bun made it honestly a better experience, so I was fine with it. There's this really cool butterfly that's blue because of the shape of its wings instead of the blue pigment, giving it this extremely cool shine effect. We then went outside for three seconds, realized it's summer, and proceeded to go back inside to air-conditioned goodness. We saw the cutest guy ever, but I decided I just had to pass because I did not have much money. Oh my god, Pumba, Pumba, Timon and Pumba, Lion King, hit movie Lion King. <laughs> and if you ever want a headache, don't worry. Come to the Natural History Museum and go into that room. We then returned to the hotel, where Mom and I went to the creepiest pool I've ever been in. The pool was, like, so echoey. It sounded like it was always coming from some other pool. As if we were in, like, the upside down and could hear the normal pool. We then went to Ted's Montana Grill, where I had a damn good burger. There's nothing really else to say, it was just good food. Then back to the hotel it was, and slept terribly to get to the thing we went back to Georgia for. The Georgia Aquarium, the reason you clicked on this video, has got to be the best aquarium I've ever been to. Out of the two I've been to, this has the best scope and scale of any of them. We immediately went up the escalator to wait for the behind the seas tour on the worst bench. Seeing the belugas being fed was pretty cool, we also got a top view of this huge tank and the top of this smaller tank. But seriously, it's a cool experience because of the information they give you. And you can also see where they make the lesser fish make sweet, sweet fish love until the greater fish have food to eat. Something cool they told us was that this wave of newly filtered water is actually synced to the music, which accompanies your entire experience. Which sounds kind of annoying when I say it like that, but it's subdued enough to add to your visit instead of harm it. After leaving our cool tour guide who let me take video of the experience, we immediately went to get very overpriced food because it was 12 and we were starting to get hungry. When we did get to eat, it was actually pretty good? No joke, this aquarium, focused on being an aquarium, actually has semi-decent food. Of course, fried food isn't necessarily hard to get right, but still, they could have done a lot worse. And apparently they also do delivery, so. Okay guys, listen, I swear to you, when I looked it up at the actual aquarium, it said delivery on the Google thing. I can't find it now, but 
You just gotta trust me, this joke is actually funny. After eating our stupidly overpriced food, we headed into the shark gallery to scope out the playing field. Lauren and Dad paid for the shark cage experience, where they lock you in a cage and then you're fed to the sharks. Mom saw this sign and said, Ocean sus. So, uh, yeah, congratulations, Zoomers. Uh, she's converted. Afterwards, we saw Facebook Mom's latest t-shirt recommendation, then it was off to the three sea lions. Two of which were having a very coordinated seizure, and the other was vibing with the red ball. I saw this fish lag, then went to possibly the most relatable character at the aquarium. We got on the moving sidewalk and entered the tunnel, which is definitely one of the highlights of the visit. Then just one moment later, we saw another. The huge tank with whale sharks, a turtle in it, and no one cared about anything else. Also, I'm a golden ally, so... That's pretty cool. We then saw the Puffins, where we met possibly the funniest guy on the entire planet. He was right behind us, and every time a Puffin entered the water, he said, Swimming birds? After hearing him say his catchphrase six times, he left, which made me sad, because I couldn't wait to see what he had next on his stand-up special. We then waited again on that awful bench, and Lauren and Dad were off to sign their souls away. Mom and I then waited for about an hour to see the sharks swim around a cage that we were not in. In the cage was a bunch of other people, but more importantly, Dad and Lauren were in there, who are both currently blurred presences. We were about done, so we went to the gift shop where I saw a sexual bird, and the cutest plushie I've ever seen. Seals are my new favorite animal. We then left to the parking garage, new seal friend in tow, where a car was actively having a panic attack. Dude, I hope their car starts when they need to leave. I know! ridiculous. Okay, so in four years, when we come again, we, we come in the evening. Okay. Unless we shark dive again. And, and we'll make sure not to fucking leave at 6.40 so that there's not a car alarm blaring. We then drove to the hotel where we all simultaneously said, I don't feel like getting anything fancy, so we got Wendy's and ate at the hotel. I then took a bath and discovered the drain makes possibly the funniest noise I've ever heard a drain make. <laughs> another day of vacation done, we again slept on our awful beds and awoke to another. This day was honestly kind of boring in comparison to the other two, it was just our shopping day. We went to the Sugarloaf Mall and found some pretty cool stuff. We started with Five Below, for some reason, where I found the most annoying fridge magnet ever made. There was also the Lego store, where I saw false advertising. There's no question mark block in Mario 64. I demand a lawsuit! I then vowed to one day own every Lego Mario set. Oh Jesus Christ. I then went to Pika Pika, where I wanted to buy out everything they had. Oh my god, I love all of these. I went right across to see the Hot Topic had two shirts and socks dedicated to our Lord and Savior. I then discovered they had a Squishmallow that my significant other really, really wanted, so I tossed aside the one that had a pen mark and relished in the $33 Lemon Kitty. We then got lunch at the food court, where dad got Cinnabon, which mom just hated because she's allergic to gluten and she could smell it the entire time he was eating. Lauren got Annie Ann's, and Mom and I got Burger King from the worst employee I think Mom's ever had the pleasure of ordering from. Uh, she tried to order her burger without the bun, which is a request so outlandish, the lady went and talked to someone in the back to confirm if it was legal. We then got our food where I was forced to eat ketchup like a normal person because they gave us a whopping four packets. And we didn't feel like going through that lady to get some more because with all of our nefarious activity, we would have looked sus. Man. Lauren transformed into a country person and went to a Bass Pro Shops, while I just waited on a bench and got told I was cute by a girl. Uh, you don't need to know that, but I knew my grandparents would want to know, uh, for some reason. I then waited on the bench some more, while Mom was actively getting scammed over at K Jewelers. Dad and I went to a game store where loose games simply cannot exist. Everything must have a case. Dad got the Spider-Man Atari game because it was $10, so why not? Then we got back in the car and drove to the second store, which was more general nerd culture stuff than specifically video games. And I just want to say, uh, game stores? If you have a weeb section, don't put the display front and center. Yes, the Venn diagram of weebs and gamers is nearly just a circle, but you're named Wizards Video Games. Put the glass case of good games in the front, because if you don't, you're gonna slowly turn into GameStop. We then headed to the Mall of Georgia, where we immediately decided, never mind, we're hungry, and found out that the Cheesecake Factory had a two-hour wait. So we ended up eating at Longhorn Steakhouse, who had a wait of a whopping five minutes. I had a burger that was mildly underdone, which makes it the worst experience I've ever had at a Longhorn. I'll be expecting the company to close. 
immediately. We went back to the hotel because we were all simply too tired to do anything else, and then I started to write the script for this video. We slept once more, this time with the comfort of knowing it was the last time we'd have to sleep in those conditions. We woke up, packed, and immediately checked out of the hotel and started driving home. <laughs> So yeah guys, that was our Georgia experience. I know this was a little different from my usual content, but I wanted to make this. If this video didn't blow up, thank you for watching it, and if it did, you're welcome for making it.